I am here today to do some slow stitching. And it's really common kind of nowadays. I mean, slow stitching has kind of become its own momentum of a way to engage with quilting um, and kind of make our pieced quilt. So we've got a pieced pillow top that's right here that I went ahead and replaced. And we have machine quilted it somewhat, but now we are actually going to proceed with some slow stitching. So slow stitching is like hand quilting, okay, but with a modern twist to it. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually going to use a floss. And so we are combining the machine quilting with some slow stitching. And so um, slow stitching is definitely something that you'll see a lot of people doing right now. And, um, and it's, you know, people are kind of grasping, hi, Amanda, to that relaxing, soothing um, therapy that it is of slow stitching a project and just kind of calmly doing that and slowing life down just a little bit. So I wanted to give you a little bit of flavor of what slow stitching is. And we're gonna do that with this um, pillow form that we made last week. And I, the smarter thing would have been to have not finished my pillow form and to have proceeded with some slow stitching before I finished it. But I promised that I would teach you guys the binding tips and tricks. So now today we're gonna go ahead and do some slow stitching on it. So I'm gonna take out my pillow form on this and I'll show you how, what we're gonna do. It's good to see you Bernadette. Hi Jane, hi Amanda. Hello Victor, hello Mary, it's so good. I love seeing all you guys. Today, um, I think all of you guys know, I've had a bird nest out in my back covered patio with a fan up there. And one of them fell out because I take photographs of things out in my patio. It has such a nice natural lighting. And to yesterday, a bird fell out of the nest. There were five little baby eggs. And one of those birds fell out and it landed on my Live Well, Live Strong quilts or one of them. And so, um, I posted a picture about it and you guys gave me advice as to what to do. We did take the bird and put it back up in the nest. And I guess birds don't necessarily have a sense of smell. So they're really okay with that. But now what's happened is I went ahead and I called like a bird refuge place just because I don't know very much about birds. But they said that the birds had conjunctivitis. They had pink eye. So three of the birds flew away yesterday, but the two birds, they had their eyes shut the whole time. And, um, and when they would try to fly, they were kind of like moths where they couldn't see anything. So today, Ellie and I, we drove an hour up to this refuge and then we drove an hour back and I hurried and rushed in here. So I gotta feel like, a little more relaxed and Ellie she was so tired and ready for her nap but I was trying to keep her awake so she didn't fall asleep in the car and I have to transition her so it was really it's been a fun morning I, I it's kind of nice to slow down and drive someplace okay so let's go ahead and get started yes it has been an adventure with the baby birds so I'm gonna take my pillow form so I have a feather pillow form and you guys have heard the story all about this glad there wasn't something living inside this I'm gonna set that to the side so this is the pillow form. I have a an envelope inside of this, an envelope fold to um, put the pillow in instead of a zipper. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slow stitch through this opening right here. It would be ideal to not slow stitch with this, but it's very, very possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna flip that camera around and I'm gonna show you the supplies that I have for slow stitching. Yes, so the birds will be saved. Uh, so at that wild bird refuge, the birds will absolutely be saved. They'll just put some ointment on their eyes. Um, and, um, and, and, and I sent the lady a picture of the bird and she was the one that diagnosed the conjunctivitis. It wasn't me. I mean, I'm not very sensible with those things. Um, quilting, I do know, but birds, I don't. And so, um, so then they said that I should drive them up there. So I did. And we, we ended up finding out that two of them had it. So let's flip that camera. Let's go ahead and push that button. Flip that camera around. Okay, so I have my quilt block and I recommend you kind of experiment with this with just a smaller project. And I really like this project. It's got a great modern vibe to it um, with quilting. And then I am using a floss. 
So it isn't like a six stranded floss. It's more of um, just like a two stranded floss that's been um, twisted together. So it's not like an embroidery floss that has the six strands, just so you guys know. Um, this one has definitely been put together. And this is a variegated floss right here. This one has a pink and a yellow hue to it. So you can see that one right there. And over here, this has like a green and a yellow, kind of like a blue um, hue to it. So, but I'm gonna use a little bit of both of these. So um, I definitely have a thimble, really any thimble will work. And for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and you just use whichever finger feels natural to you. And um, so I'm just using kind of like this rubber one that I have and I have several different kinds of thimbles. So just get, in fact, I couldn't find it for a while, my thimbles. And so I actually grabbed a, a walnut shell. Isn't that funny? Anyways, I, I was worried. Okay, so now I am going to use, I've got this, for this, we're gonna use a shishiko type of needle, and it's an embroidery needle for red work, that type of thing. And this, it's a size eight. This is from, let me put my glasses on. This is from Sue Daily Designs, or this says Gina Kimball. Oh, I didn't know that. It, oh, it's a, okay. Um, so this is actually a different designer of this one. But we're just going to use a basic embroidery needle, and it's a size 8. And what's really nice about this needle, and I also like this little container for it because it's easy to kind of shove into a small, you guys have seen my um, little sewing pouches. So I am going to take uh, my needle, and you can see how we've got a larger eye there, and we also have a larger, longer needle. And this is a little bit stronger of a needle, so we're gonna be able to go through all the different layers. Okay, I'm now gonna go ahead and just thread my needle. Of course, a needle threader works great, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. And I'm just kind of pinching it through and threading my needle with my thread. Okay, Oop, I'm kind of pulling it apart a little bit. Got it in there. A needle threader is always handy dandy to have, but I don't have one sitting here right now. Okay, we're now gonna pull that through here. So this is what you would do. I am now going to go ahead and trim my thread. So I'm not gonna make it too long. And of course, we're just gonna use one strand here. And I'm gonna just trim my thread so I've got an end here. In order to tie your thread, hi, Belle, we're doing some slow stitching. We're gonna wrap this around the needle just like one time, maybe two times. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that two times around. And I'm going to pull my knot all the way through this thread. Let's go ahead and pull that up and through. Oops, sorry guys. Let me pull it the other way, kind of unraveled on me. And let's pull this up and through. And we're going to have our little knot. Actually, it did not knot. I'm going the wrong direction on there. I'm going to just knot this a traditional way. And sometimes I might put one or two knots on this, but that's a pretty thick floss. So we're gonna just go with one knot. Okay, so now, since I have already machine quilted this, I don't have to worry about any kind of pins or things like that, um, which is the nice part of doing the slow stitch. You will see um, different slow stitching type techniques that are used out there and pictures of different things that are out there. So what I am going to do is I am going to actually start right here and I'm going to just sew a short line in accordance with this log cabin block. So I'm, I'm not, it's not gonna continuously go around. I'm just gonna kind of give a little shot of, and start right here, and then I'm gonna stop over here. So let's go ahead and start right here at this one, and I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna stop right over here at this other point. Now, since I have my quilt block finished, all right, and this is going to be a pillow. I'm gonna show you one method of something that you can do. We're gonna bring our needle up right here. So we're gonna be doing some stopping and starting. And I am going to kind of go about the center of this little white strip right here. And the, the variegated thread that I'm working with, this has a wide, a long variegation to it. So it's actually gonna look a little bit more like a white thread with just little pops of color popping through. So it's not a heavily variegated type thread. 
Okay, so has anybody done shashiko or slow stitching um, uh, with a floss in, in accenting your quilt? So this is more of an accent that we're using versus trying to keep everything together. I'm now gonna go down right where I came up. I'm gonna go just a little bit further from it. And we're gonna go down and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to rock it back and forth. Let me go ahead and put my thimble on. And I'm gonna rock this needle back and forth and I'm going to try to stay consistent in the length that I'm using. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna just bring this over and rock this back and forth and hopefully I'm getting a consistent stitch length. So what you're aiming for is a consistent stitch length of your stitches that are being exposed and not exposed all right so we're just going to rock this back back and forth just a little bit and this is actually just a really beautiful thing to do to just kind of slow down in life and feel like we are just you know it's almost like a sense of wealth and that we have the time in our lives to take a break from the craziness of life and to actually relax and do some slow stitching. So this is really just a great activity that you can do and you can experiment with it in just the things that you want to go ahead and just do it as little bits of accent. You will see, um, say a baby quilt that has been quilted, so it's generally completely secure, but someone has gone in and done a little bit of stitching um, on it of some hand quilting and it's and tip, typically people call it a slow stitch now the other thing that i want to do here is as i'm stitching along i'm also wanting to make sure that my line is staying consistent so to tell you the truth i don't really feel like i have a consistent line there the other thing that we can also do here to try to keep your line straight and i want to go ahead and show you this real quickly is you can take a hair tool which a hair tool, this is my point to point turner. I don't know, do you guys, does anybody have? Oh, Mary, I don't sell this floss in my store. So I do not actually sell this floss, but it really is a pretty floss. And I also have just a basic white. I just thought for this project, um, this, um, this floss would look really good. The other thing that I'm going to do is you can take a point to point turner or a Hera marker, it's H-E-R-A, Hera. And you can go ahead, because your fabric has memory in it, especially when you haven't washed your fabrics, um, it has like a memory in it of, of the starch. So we can just go ahead and run this. There is nothing sharp on here, okay? There's nothing sharp, there's not a spinning wheel, there's nothing on there, but I'm gonna just run my Hera, the, the end of it that you would consider your Hera end, it's more of just a smooth end, and just kind of pierce my fabric just ever so slightly, because your fabric has memory to it. So can you see that line? And that will help me keep a straight line as I'm doing this. So let's go ahead and, and do some more. I probably should have marked it at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and just do some poking on this. And your 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 fabric will also have a memory of where some of those pokes were. I'm gonna put my reading glasses back on. Okay, so, and let's just make sure we've got a consistency. And you'll find a consistency. There is no rule as to how many stitches you need to do per inch. There's no rule of anything like that. It's really a rocking motion that is comfortable to you. We're using a, lo a longer needle so that you can come through and you can bring this along. Okay, so you can see that rocking motion. I'm going to show you how to finish your um, thread at the end because I'm doing a start and a stop. Remember on this one, I just tied a knot and since this is not exposed, I did not bury my knot, but I can. So real fast, I do want to show you how to bury your knot. What you do is just go ahead and you pull this knot through I'm gonna just kind of give it a little tug on this side. You can bury your knot into the fabric because I did just one turn of this. And let me go ahead and you pull that knot through so you cannot see the end. So we're gonna just pull that through one little stitch. I probably should have done that earlier. Oh, it's through. Okay, so it's now seated in the knot is seated inside 
behind the, the thread, the fabric, I'm sorry, and the knot is rather floating in there between the fabric and the batting. Okay, so I'm gonna just make sure we've got it just placed a little bit more. Hang on. I should have done a little pull at the very beginning. Let me pull that in just a little bit more. Okay, so we've got that seated in there. I'm also gonna just give myself a little bit of a pull right there. Okay. Okay, and I will show you how to end your, your thread at the very end. So let's go ahead and just do some more stitches right along here. I'm gonna try to go a little faster. So, and you can see with that pierced little line, it's working out just fine. And just get yourself a little rocking motion. And obviously you use your thimble so that you can go ahead and push this through without too much trouble, okay? And you'll have a particular place on your finger that you like to have your thimble. And you'll feel comfortable with that. Here we go. Lady is making noises to me. I think she wants to go out of the room. I just got back and they were so excited to see Ellie and see her before she laid down for her nap. I don't know why she needs to go out right now, but that's fine. The back door is open. And you guys, I also took the birds to the refuge um, because I did not want those little birds falling down out of that nest and then maybe my dog's getting them. You know what I mean? I just didn't want like, I don't know, something yucky out there. And then those birds are taken care of. The other three did did um, fledge and they actually flew the coop yesterday, flew in the nest and it was really, it was actually in the backyard when they did that and they came back for a little bit too. Okay, so we're just doing a nice rocking motion here. So you can see that and how that looks. So this is called slow stitching, typically right now. This is called a slow stitching. It's really just a little bit of quilting with a, a floss. And you could also do this just as the main part of your quilting in your quilt. So let's see here, Victor, what kind of needle do you use when you do your hand quilting? Victor likes to hand quilt and um, finishes his quilts with hand quilting. What type of needle do you like to use? And what type of thread you, do you use? I think he said before that he uses a quilting thread. So, and this floss is a, um, it's like a 12. Let me see here. Um, yes, it's a 12. So, um, is the size of that floss right here that I'm using. So, different threads, as the number gets lower, the, um, the, the thread gets stronger. So normally when we quilt with our domestic sewing machines, we are, I use a 50 weight um, thread um, when I am actually using my sewing machine. Okay, so we're gonna bring this over and I'm just kind of following along. You do not need to hoop this. You can hoop it if you like to. So hooping it is just fine. Some people keep it ho hooped and some people don't. Um, as they are doing this. So this is something that you can just kind of put on your lap without a hoop and you don't have to worry about hooping it. Uh, you could hoop it though, it's up to you. I kind of like to have mine not hooped so that I don't have to be constantly moving the hoop to keep a continuous line. And you don't have to do um, really anything extra special. You could actually be using a contrasting thread. So I'm gonna be using this thread right here, which is a metallic um, thread that is going to be for the Live Well, Live Strong um, mini foundation paper piece, 20 by 20 inch. So, but I wanted to give you kind of like a little basic lesson here. I wanna get over to this end so I can end this thread and tie it off. So let's go ahead and get over to the end. And then I will start another one just in this video. So this is just something fun to experiment with to get a, give you a little bit of a different look to your quilts and kind of give it that really, I don't know, it just gives it that softer look um, with a hand, um, some handwork to it. So let's go ahead and bring this over. And one more time, I'm gonna go back down and we're going through all the layers of the quilt. I could just, Shashiko, does anybody know what 
Shashiko is. Okay, Victor says he thinks his uh, quilting thread cotton is a 40 weight um is what he has or what he has in hand so really there's no crazy rules to all these things okay so now i'm going to bring this all the way through let's go ahead and take a look at that i'm going to just put my needle over here so doesn't that have just a really sweet soft look to it and really i'm just going to add a little bit of hand accent from here to here and then on this one i'll go from here to here and over on these ones too. So it really is just a nice little soft look that goes with your machine quilting. Does that make sense? You could do your entire quilt this way. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to knot this because I'm gonna finish this right here. I just kind of want my hand quilting to go with this bar of color, okay? And I'm going to be using this yellow and the pink one on this side and I'm going to use the yellow and the green one over here. You could do this with just a solid thread. You could do it with regular thread too. You don't have to use a floss. You don't have to do anything like that. But I'm going to just do the yellow over here on this side and do some blue and this color over here just to have a little bit of accent. And you can see here that that variegation you hardly notice it. There's almost just like a little hint, little pop of color that kind of comes out here or there. So because it's a wide variegation. So maybe on your first ones, you don't want to invest in purchasing a variegated thread. You would actually, it might be more economical to just get a solid color so you could use it for multiple colors, okay? I just thought these were really fun and I'm loving the colors here that are going on. Now, we are going to end this thread, and I'm going to show you how to end this. We are going to knot the thread at about an inch from my last stitch. So I'm going to bring this down right about here. And so, and I'm going to show you how to knot this just, and we're going to just do a basic knot right here. And we're going about an inch from where our last stitch is, okay? So we're going to bring this down through here, and then I am going to travel with my needle. So I'm just coming right here at the end of that little bar, and I'm gonna travel with my needle over to here. I could also bring this down to the back of my quilted top, but we normally want to bury our threads. I'm going to go in here, I'm gonna pull this knot so it goes through the fabric, but the knot is gonna float somewhere over here. So let's go ahead and pull that through the fabric, and now that knot is floating in here in the middle of this. We are now going to snip that end. And that's the same way that you start a thread too. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna just kind of massage this a little bit and take the memory of where I pulled that thread back up. Does that make sense? Okay, let's do that same thing as a start right here. And we'll go ahead and end the video, but I do wanna show you Let's see, I'm gonna do it on this one right here because this is long enough to kind of get that little piece right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and knot my thread and I'm just doing one knot because this is a floss and it's thicker than we need. So you can see I've got a, a knotted floss right there. Let me put that on top of my hand so you can see the knot. There's just one little knot right there. I'm going to bring this, I'm gonna start over here but I'm going to bring this knot in somewhere over here, okay? And we're, I'm gonna bring it up. Oh, let's go ahead and mark the center line again so I know where I'm going to start my stitching. So that kind of goes away, but I'm going to, let's see what that measures. There we go, I think that looks good, but right about there. So you can see how easy this is to do. You just kind of mark a little spot here or there where you think you're gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this in over about right here. We're gonna pull this up. You guys, has anybody done a lot of hand quilting? Um, I have one quilt that is completely hand quilted. That I It was one of my very first quilts. I don't know why I did that, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and pull this knot through. There's my knot. I'm gonna pull it through the fabric. So it kind of comes through. I'm going to now kind of scratch that little end so it hides the hole that it came through. And now I'm going to start my slow stitches. 
and you just do whatever length is comfortable for you. Just try to be consistent with your stitch lengths, all right, is what you're trying to do here. So we're going to bring that through. I'm going to use it to pushing that stronger needle all the way through. Doesn't that look pretty? So you can see that little knot is floating just about right here, but that is secure enough to keep it in place. Okay, does anybody have any questions? So think and daydream. I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera. So I just wanted to be able to introduce slow stitching for you. I'm going to go ahead and put my needle in here. I am going to work on this and kind of keep doing some little slow stitching. Maybe I'll do a little video of um, a time lapse video where you guys can see me slow stitching and the progress that I make. But yeah, um, Amanda, yes, um, hand quilting your Dresden quilt would be just a beautiful thing to do. It's such a special quilt. But really adding an accent of some slow stitching or hand quilting is something that's relaxing to do. It's a nice hand project to be able to take with you. Say your family's going on a road trip or you're going to watch some sporting games of your grandchildren or your kids. And it's a nice hand project that you can take with you or be able to enjoy with your family as you guys are doing an activity and you just can kind of say it's sporting events that are, they're watching on TV and that you can enjoy that time with your family and also enjoys a little bit of stitching in there too. So anyways, there is such value in slowing down in life. And there's also a, a feeling of wealth that we can have that we are able to indulge ourselves with such a nice quiet time in our lives and to slow down enough to actually take some time out and to slow stitch and to relax and to ponder and to do those types of things too. So it's, it's something that you can feel really wealthy and really good about too. Okay, you guys, so that is a little introduction of slow stitching for you. I will come back with my progress and let you guys know, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my two different variegated threads. If you wanna get started, I will have a list of supplies that you can get and have a little tutorial for you guys too. So, but this time I'm using an embroidery needle that's a bit longer, so, and that definitely works. Anyways, we'll see you guys a little bit later. Enjoy your day, and I will be back on Friday. Next week, I might only have one live video next week on Mondays is what I'm thinking to do. Then I'm gonna go ahead and spend time with the women that have paid for a paid course and spend time with them on Zoom one-on-one -on -one or together as a group in there. So anyways, on Wednesdays and Fridays. So I've gotta contact you guys and talk to you guys about that. We'll talk to you a little bit later, but I'll be back Friday at noon. Enjoy and maybe indulge yourself with a little bit of slow stitching. Love you guys tons. Thank you all, you quilting friends. You guys definitely make my life 